Good morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever and whenever you are. My name is Benjamin, and welcome to another Game Maker Studio 2 tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you guys how to create a script that will allow you to select the very top instance in a group of instances. I've got an object here, and it has a sprite that has two frames. The first frame is just the plain blue box and the second frame is a box with a white outline around it so this represents the selected version of the object. Then inside the object I have selected equals false and image speed equals zero so that it won't animate. Inside the step event I just set the image index equal to selected so if selected is true then we'll have the sprite with the white outline. If it's false then we'll have the normal box. Then what I did is I put this object in a room, actually I put three of them, and then I gave them a creation code with slightly different depths, so that they'll show up at a different depth. And then I also gave them an, a slight image blend, so that the ones farther back will be darker. Now let's say that you wanted to be able to select these objects. If you go into the object, the first thing you might do is add an event, add a mouse, and a left pressed event, and then you might just set selected equals true. If you run this then you're going to see that we're going to have a problem which is that when we it works if we click outside here right but if we click uh, where all three of them are it's going to actually select all of them and we don't want that we don't want to select all of them we want to be able to select the one that's on the very top. So the next thing that you might try let's get rid of that left pressed event the next thing you might try is creating an object, naming this O underscore controller, or just control, adding event, going to mouse, global, global left pressed event, and inside here you might do something like this, var instance equals instance place mouse x mouse y O underscore object since that's what I named it and then you might say if instance exists instance instance dot selected equals true and just to make sure every time we click we unselect all the other ones you do something like this with O object selected equals false. So what that would do is unselect all of the objects. It'll loop through each object and unselect it. And then only select the one that we just most recently clicked on at the mouse position. So instance, actually this should be instance position. So instance position returns if there's any, if there's one of these at this position, it will give us the ID to that one. Then make sure you put that object control in the room. Now if we run the game, you can see we can now select the different objects. And if we click on all of them, it only selects one of them. But you can see it's not selecting the top one. It's actually selecting this one right here. The reason is because if you look at the instance order, and we like hide a few of these instances, uh, it's actually selecting the one that was placed in the room very first. So even though that one's behind the other objects, it's selecting the one that was placed in the room very first. And that's how it decides which one to select. So what we need is a script that can loop through the clicked on instances and give us the one that's on the very top. I'm going to create a new script and name this top instance position. It's going to take an X, a Y, and an object. Var XX equals argument 0, var YY equals argument 1, var object equals argument 2. The logic behind this is we're going to create a list, then we're going to loop through all of the clicked on instances. And the way we do that is by calling instance position like we did before, adding the instance to a list, and then deactivating it. We're also going to check to see whether its depth is less than 
the depth of our highest instance. And if it is, then we'll keep track of that one, the one that's on top. And then at the end, we're going to loop through the list and reactivate all the instances again, and then destroy the list. So we're creating the list right here that we'll store the instances in. Now we need to find the first instance. Make sure to use instance position, not instance place. Now we'll create the top instance variable. and set it equal to our instance. Since that's the only one we have, we might as well just assume that it's on the top. Now we're going to loop through each instance and check the depth. So we'll say while instance exists instance ds list add instance list instance so we'll add our instance to the list the reason we have to have a list is because when we've deactivated them the only way to access a deactivated object is by having access to its ID so we're saving all the IDs inside of this list instance deactivate object pass in the instance then if instance dot depth is less than top instance dot depth top instance equals instance so as we're looping through this if we ever find an instance that has a lower depth than our top instance then we update our to our new top instance and I wonder why top instance doesn't have syntax highlighting or instance list that's odd that some of them don't. Finally, we're going to say instance equals instance position xx yy object. Once we've deactivated this instance, it allows us to call instance position again, and it won't actually access the same one again. It will grab a new one because we're deactivating them once we've, once we've grabbed them. And that's how we avoid grabbing the same instance over and over and over again, is by deactivating them and then calling instance position to get at the next instance that we want to try and get at the same position. Once we've done that, we can reactivate all the instances. While ds list size instance list is greater than zero instance activate object instance list and then we're going to use the accessor and get the very first instance in the list so we're going to activate the first one and then we're going to call ds list delete and pass in our instance list and then destroy the very first we'll remove the very first entry into our list so this is going to it's going to activate the first instance in the list and then remove the I remove that um, instance from the list, which would then shrink the size of our DS uh, list, and it will do this until there's no more items left in our list. Finally, we need to destroy the list. To make sure we don't get a memory leak. DS list destroy instance list and return. The top instance. Now our script should be good to go. We can go into our control object and instead of calling instance position, we'll call top instance position. You can see we can now click on all of them, but if we click on an area that has multiple instances, it always selects the top one.
there you go. I know this is a very specific use case, but I've found that I've been asked this question actually a few times by people wanting to know how they could only select the very top instance. So I just wanted to show my take on how you might go about that. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you learned something in this video, be sure and like, favorite, and if you're not already, subscribe. Thank you guys. I will see you guys later.